this project, we will be installing a ceiling fan using wire mold metal raceway and an existing outlet. The circuit is a standard 15 amp circuit. The wall height is 7.5 feet. First, shut off the circuit at the breaker to shut off power to the existing power outlet. Double check the existing outlet to make sure the power is off. We will now plan the project. The tools you will need for this project are a drill, a fine tooth hacksaw, a metal file, a Phillips and a slotted screwdriver, a wire stripper, wire snips, wire nuts, a rubber mallet, a laser level and cutting guide, a tape measure, and a step ladder. Of course, you'll need the right wire for the job. You will also need a supply of number 8 flathead screws, a number 10 ground screw for each transition point, in this case the starter box, and number 632 machine screws for attaching the starter box base to the existing box in the wall. The wire mold parts we are going to use for the project are a starter box for adapting an existing outlet as a starting point for the wiring source, an extra deep outlet box for housing larger device controls such as fan speed control and dimmer switches, wire mold metal raceway to carry wires downstream from the starter box, a flat elbow for a 90 degree turn up the wall, an inside elbow for a 90 degree turn to transition from wall to ceiling. For our fan project, we need a fan box. Use wire mold V573-8AF for ivory and BW4F for white. Though not all are required for this project, a complete range of fittings and elbows are available. Last, we have mounting hardware for the raceway, including clips, straps, couplings and bushings, these items are sold individually or are available in a convenient accessory pack. Today we'll be using the clips. The clips are for level wall surfaces and the straps are for slightly uneven surfaces such as brick or cinder block. For this ceiling fan installation, the ceiling fan must hang directly from a ceiling joist or UL approved fan box previously mounted within the ceiling. Our first step is to locate the ceiling joist. In this case, the joist is slightly off-center from the existing outlet, so the fan installation will require one turn up the wall. The laser level will work with both raceway fittings and boxes. Turn on the laser and rotate to establish a level line using the laser level bubble. Use the laser level line as a guide to mark holes for raceway clips. If you cannot fasten the clips to studs, use hollow wall anchors for securing the clips. For longer runs, use support clips at 2.5 foot intervals. The installation of the starter box base is the first step in the process. Again, make sure the power is off. The starter box will house the existing wiring and feed the downstream wiring which, in this case, is 14 gauge. Whether the ceiling fan has a light or an attenuator will determine the wiring configuration. Each ceiling fan is different, so consult the directions from the manufacturer for the proper wiring schematic or consult a professional electrician. The starter box typically goes over an existing in-wall outlet box containing a duplex receptacle. Remove the faceplate and the two receptacle mounting screws. Pull the existing receptacle and wires through the opening in the back of the base plate. Then secure the base plate to the existing box with two number 632 mounting screws. These wires will be connected later to the new wires of the surface mounted system. Install a number 10 ground screw into the threaded dimple on the starter box base. Next, break out the starter box twist outs. Note that the twist outs are scored for use with either standard ivory or high capacity white series. Make sure the knockout matches the raceway profile used in the project. Using the laser level, find the intersection point of the ceiling joist and the outlet box. This will be your flat elbow location. Mark the location of the elbow tongue. Measure from the outlet box tongue to the flat elbow tongue location. Add 3 8 inch to each end to get the right length of raceway. This extra 3 8 inch at each end enables the raceway to slide over the tongue at the box or fitting. Cut the raceway to length, carefully deburr the cut, and insert bushings into each cut end. Before installing the raceway, slide the elbow tongue onto the raceway. Slide the raceway onto the starter box tongue. Tap the raceway into the support clip with the mallet. Then screw the flat elbow to the wall. Next, locate the position of the switch box. Typically, the top of the switch box is located 48 inches above the finished floor. 
mark the top and bottom of the box. Using the switch box base, mark the screw holes and install wall anchors if necessary. Measure from the bottom of the switch box to the top of the flat elbow. Add 3 8 inch to each end. Cut the raceway, deburr, and add bushings. Slide the raceway onto the flat elbow tongue. Before mounting the raceway, slide the base of the switch box onto the end of the raceway. Now, mount the assembly in line on the wall. Use the mallet or back of your hand to tap the raceway into the support clip. Then, screw the switch box base to the wall. In similar fashion, temporarily position the inside elbow base fitting in order to get the right raceway measurement between the top of the switch box and the inside elbow. Be sure to add 3 8 inch at each end to slide the raceway over each tongue. Cut and deburr the raceway and install the bushing into the cut end. Slide the elbow onto the cut raceway and then slide the opposite end over the tongue on the base of the switch box. Tap the raceway into the clip. Then, fasten the elbow base to the wall at the inside corner. While holding the fan box in position, Mark its location and measure the length between it and the pencil mark at the inside elbow. Add 3 8 inch to each end. Cut and deburr the raceway and insert bushings at the cut ends. Slide the raceway onto the elbow tongue and then softly tap the raceway onto the support clip. This will hold the raceway in place along the ceiling as you install the fan box. Before mounting the fan box base, be sure to insert the long metal screws through the base and install the hexagonal standoffs so they are fully tightened. These screws will be used later to hang the fan. Slide the fan box onto the raceway tongue. Then, securely fasten the fan box base to the ceiling joist. Now it's time to feed the wire into the raceway and connect the devices. Push the wires through the raceway, leaving 12 inches of wire at each end. Start at the elbows and push the wire through the raceway in both directions. Next, attach the elbow caps. Then, make the proper electrical connections. The original duplex receptacle, the fan control outlet box, and the fan box. Remember, the entire system must be grounded. Remove the existing ground wire from the green ground screw on the receptacle. Then, cut two 6-inch lengths of new ground wire and create a pigtail with those two wires, the old ground wire, and the wire leading through the raceway up to the switch with a proper sized wire nut. Connect the remaining ground pigtails, one to the ground screw on the receptacle and the other to the ground screw on the starter box base. Attach the new black and white wires to the screw terminals next to the existing black and white wires, white next to white and black next to black. Once the wiring has been fed to the boxes, secure the box covers to their bases and attach the face plates with the screws provided. Wire mold metal raceway is available in ivory or white and is paintable to match any decor.